Topic 8, Designing and Evaluating Portfolio Assessment in the Classroom Group 8 members Donna Marie Miraflor, Emelinica Nica Maria Livar, Sheila May Barbante, and Lindy Buslon Baguio. Good day everyone, especially to our subject teacher, Mom Julia Perilita. So for today's video, we'll be going to discuss our assigned topic, which is the signing and evaluating portfolio assessment in the classroom. Before we proceed to the discussion proper, allow me to read first the intended learning outcomes. So at the end of the chapter, you should be able to first develop portfolio assessment and second, evaluate portfolio assessment utilized in the classroom. So this chapter 8 describes the processes in planning and implementing portfolio assessment in the classroom. Since you already know the nature of portfolio assessment, its purposes, types, and other components that was discussed by the previous group, at this point, we will clarify the steps in designing and evaluating portfolio as an assessment tool. So throughout the discussion, you will know about the general procedure that you may use in crafting and implementing portfolio assessment in the classroom. So what is portfolio development? Or what comes up to your mind if you hear these terms? So I know most of the people, if they hear the word portfolio, there are many different images comes up to their minds. So others may think compiling their works for review. For teachers, often it contains gathered samples of their lesson plans or documents that reflect their knowledge and skills. So if we talk about portfolio development, this requires the learners to collect and integrate examples of their work and allows the teachers to assess their learners as well. So this portfolio provides multiple ways of assessing students' learning over time. So this assessment tool provides opportunities for both the learners and teachers to better understand the educational process in a wider perspective. So in designing portfolio assessment, it requires some advanced and careful planning. So it begins with a clear idea about the purpose of the assessment. So in developing portfolio assessment, we have here some steps that we need to know because this will be your guide or direction if you are tasked to make a portfolio assessment. So the steps of developing and implementing portfolio assessment are aligned with the teaching and learning assessment to the curriculum and teaching and learning activities as well. The first step is you have to identify the overall purpose and focus. So the designs and use of portfolio must begin with a clear description of your purpose and focus. So in the first part of your portfolio, you can state there a short description about your purpose of having that portfolio or you have to state there who is the main highlight and focus of that portfolio. Or you can ask yourself with these questions, why do I want a portfolio? Or what learning targets and curriculum goals it will serve? So with this, you can clearly identify why you want your students to create a portfolio. So here is a list of questions on how to prepare a new portfolio. So these questions are your guides. It can be your guide or direction in preparing to use portfolio. So here, number one, who will construct the portfolio. Number two, what type of portfolio do you want to use? So number three, what are the purposes and objectives of that portfolio? What categories of work samples should go into that portfolio? What criteria will students or groups use to select their interests? Who will develop the rubrics to assess and evaluate the portfolios? So portfolios will not only be used to assess understanding, but it is also ideal for assessing product, skill, and reasoning targets. So this is especially through for multidimensional skills such as writing, reading, and problem solving that are continually improved and demonstrated through products. So with extensive self-reflection, critical thinking, these are two important targets. 
and also students develop metacognitive and decision-making skills. So as with other performance assessments according to Macmillan 2007, portfolios generally are not very efficient for assessing knowledge targets. So why is it? So the reason behind this is that we have to distinguish between learning targets for individual work samples and the content of the portfolio as a whole. So these targets that reflect all content tends to be broader and general. So in the present K-12 curriculum, they provide learning targets which need to be achieved in the form of content and performance standards. So the nature of using portfolio assessment is based from the importance and focus of the learning targets. So it necessitates that portfolio matches with the learning standards and goals. So here is an example of assessing reading skills performance which shows alignment of teaching and learning goal, activities and assessment tasks which includes portfolio evidence. So in the reading skills performance, we have here the goal, the sample classroom activity, the portfolio evidence, and assessment tool. So in the first part, we have here in a goal, for example, the code. So it includes the basic reading skills for beginning or weak readers. So for the sample classroom activity, we have to read simple text. In the portfolio evidence, we have here word bank that includes the list of words mastered, selected text, I can read, completed, reading task. So for the assessment tools, we have here individual progress report, peer complement, self-peer assessment, checklist, and reading skills. The next step is we have to identify the physical structure. So once the purpose and targets have been clarified, we need to think of the physical structure of the portfolio. So here are some practical questions that affect the successful use of portfolio in your classroom. So first, what it will look like? Second, we have here, where will the students place the outputs? What type of container is appropriate? Do they need file folders, clear book, plastic bins? How are the materials to be organized? Is it categorically, numerically, alphabetically, by subject area, or in other ways? And where can students store the portfolios for easy access? So let us remember if students cannot manage and access their materials effectively, they will become discouraged. So you may need your original intentions based on the answer to practical considerations. So the choices of products and work outputs influence students on what to include in their portfolio. Hello, my name is Lillian Tiazabagio from Intel at Apple. So for today, I'm going to tackle the appropriate organization and courses of content. The content of portfolio consists of end sheets, the student products, and a physical record, which provides assessment information about the content and processes identified in the dimension to be assessed. These naturally are artifacts which are derived from the different learning activities. The range of samples is extensive and must be determined to some extent by the subject matter and the instruction as presented in the table. So we have here the examples of artifacts for portfolios by subject area. So we have the language arts, mathematics, science, and social studies. So we have first the language of arts. So these are the types of entries that we should consider. We have the favorite fonts, songs, and letters. So it belongs to language arts. Finish samples of different writing genres, persuasive letters, poetry, information stories, literature extensions. We have scripts for drama, visual arts, webs, charts, timelines, and murals. We have also the audio tape of reading, notes from individual reading and research, writing responses that illustrate critical and creative thinking, writing responses, literacy components, which are plot, setting, point of view, character development, links to life, 
and theme criticism. Items with evidence of style, organization, and voice clarity. And lastly, the evidence of effort, first drafts, second drafts, and the finished drafts. And now we have the entries of mathematics. The first one is the solution to open-ended question. Graphs and histograms, geometric shapes, examples of perimeter, area, area, and cubic space. Problem made up by students to display a concept. Models, photo showing use of manipulatives, written discussion of mathematical concepts, statistical manipulation of data, description of mathematical concepts found in the physical world. Lastly, the paper showing correction to mathematical errors. Let's move forward to the science. Prediction based on prior experience, data tables, concept maps, drawing to scale, graphs, inferences, conclusions based on data, diagrams, charts, interpretation of trends, written discussion of science concepts, inquiry designs, science technology society connections, and examples of science misconception that is corrected. We have now the interest of social studies. Written descriptions of the different cultures, institutions, and professions. Discussion of equality, justice, democracy, freedom, rights, and other large social concepts. Drawing of artifacts, timelines, examples of constitutions and civic responsibilities. Position paper on a social issue, investigation of a social issue. Family shield and explanations of symbols. And lastly, the proposal to respond to a social problem. In other words, portfolio is, is a place where we can store or put our assessment information. Select the organizational entries of portfolio that will allow the students to meet the purpose of portfolio. So according to Macmillan 2017, he pointed out to use work samples that capitalize advantages of portfolios such as flexibility, individuality, and authenticity. The categories or types of entries should consider the content and process dimension it will assess and the minimum and maximum number of entries per category. This often means giving students choices and potentials on what they want to include in their portfolio at the same time that instructional activities are developed. So let's move forward to another topic, student reflection guidelines. Reflection allows students to make sense of material or experience in relation to oneself, others, and the conditions that shape the material or experience. So before implementing your portfolio, assessment plan, establish guidelines to help students self-reflect along the way. So below are the examples of questions which are helpful in determining student reflection. So the first question, describe the steps that you use to complete today's activity. Which steps really help you complete the activity and which ones were less useful? What would you change next time? So just the first question, it will help students to think critically and look back to what they have done and realize what changes must be done. Next, what personal strengths did you notice in completing today's work? What aspect of today's work was meaningful to you? And so on. So with this, with this question, student will develop greater ownership of the process and will have experience in working collaboratively with you as their teacher. So that is all for my chapter. For number five, which is to identify and evaluate scoring criteria. By working on the student criteria, 
Students will develop greater ownership of the process and will have experience in working cooperatively and collaboratively with you as a teacher. As the facilitator of learning, you are responsible to ensure the reliability and high quality of scoring criteria. The student should be informed also on how you will evaluate their portfolios. Scoring criteria describe the quality of evidence at different levels of achievement for each performance indicator. Common scoring criteria are an essential component of a proficiency-based system of learning designed to promote equitable, challenging, and personalized outcomes for all students. The criteria identify the aspects of student performance that are assessed and or evaluated and they serve as a guide to what teachers look for. The example below shows example of math portfolio and their content of problem solving. As you can see in the first picture, there is a content categories and questions that must be completed by the students. So these questions help to identify and evaluate students' idea or understanding in the topic questions. What is this content categories? Content categories is essentially an organizational structure to help you sort and distribute your content based on its nature. Obviously, from the word organization, meaning you will arrange this given content based on its nature. This is primarily a high level of view of your content and is meant to help you plan and execute your content. The second picture depicts a criteria for performance rating that must be completed by the teacher. This composed of a standard or principle of judging, evaluating, or selecting something. As you can see in the picture, there are four objectives of the criteria, which are the quality of reflection, mathematical knowledge, strategic knowledge, and communication. In every objective, there is a rating or the achievement level that indicate the level of performance of the students. As usual, 5 is the highest rating while 1 is the lowest rating. In every rating, there is a descriptor that uses to consider how students behave in specific relevant situations. That is why it is important for learners and teachers to identify and evaluate scoring criteria to achieve the standard with efficiency, develop ownership, and reliability. For number six, which is to communicate the results of portfolio, it is referred to the final step in implementing portfolio assessment. It is to conduct a conference with each student to review its contents, the student's reflections, and assessments of the individual output. Portfolios can encourage students to take more ownership and responsibility over the learning process. In some schools, Portfolios are a way for students to critique and evaluate their own work and academic progress, often during the process of deciding what will be included in their portfolios. So here is a checklist for implementing and using portfolio. First, are the students knowledgeable about what a portfolio is and how it will be used? Second, do students know why portfolio are important? Third, are the students responsible for or involved in seeking the content? Fourth, is there a sufficient number of work samples but not too many? Fifth, is the table of contents included? Sixth, are specific self-evaluation questions provided? 7. Is the checklist of contents complete? 8. Are scoring criteria for individualized teacher written comments provided? 9. Are student teacher conferences included? So again, these are checklists for implementing and using portfolio. 
I am Emmeline, and my topic is all about portfolio evaluation. Now, there are three types of portfolio evaluation. The first one is student evaluation. The second one is teacher evaluation. And the third one is student-teacher conference. Let's talk about student evaluation. One advantage of portfolio assessment is allowing the students to revisit, reflect, and evaluate their own work. This allows them to practice critiquing and conceptualizing the quality of their work based on the criteria performance. Teacher as a model should be the first person to demonstrate the skills in evaluating and critiquing portfolio. Here are some questions that can be asked to facilitate student self-reflection for individual work, which give insights into how students have been reaching their learning targets. Why did you select this piece of writing? What did you learn from the selection? Can you identify your strengths and weaknesses? What problems have you encountered in doing the task? Which is the most satisfying experience? What are your insights after reading the poem? Is this your best work? What kind of work would you like to do in the future? Those questions will guide the students to constructing their self-reflection. The second one is the teacher evaluation. So what is teacher evaluation? The teacher can use numerical scores to summarize judgment or qualitative system. Scoring needs to be reliable and should not be affected by inconsistencies not related to the qualities being judged. The purpose of portfolio is to assess the students' outcomes of the instructional goals. The sample of entries are the indicators whether students have achieved their goals of instruction which are evaluated based on the portfolio's entire content. Structure and individual entries. The teacher is both the observer and the rater. The third, but not the least, is the student-teacher conference. The conference should be scheduled throughout the year which provides important link between the students and the teachers. Your students can be responsible for conducting the conference and this will serve as a motivating force for the learners to produce excellent portfolio in the future. So according to Macmillan 2007, Macmillan pointed out that students need to compare their reflections with your evaluations and make plans for subsequent work. Although weaknesses and areas for improvement need to be covered, emphasize students' progress and achievement as well. This also provides an excellent means of communicating with parents as a tripartite communication between the parents, teachers, and students Portfolio assessment provides framework for meaningful three-way discussion of a progress, achievement, and limitations. After the portfolios are complete, it is a good idea to have an exhibition of the portfolios and student-led parent-teacher conferences in which students present their portfolios to their parents. In this way, parents can appreciate their children on what they are working and it can also make them proud. Here is a checklist which can help you design and enhance your portfolio assessment program. A portfolio development checklist with the following guide questions. Number one, what purposes will your portfolio serve? Number two, what cognitive skills will be assessed by the individual entries? Number three, what dispositions do you want your entries to reflect? Number four, what criteria or rubrics will you use to judge the extent to which these skills position were selected, were achieved? Number five, in rating the portfolio as a whole, what things will you look for? Number six, what kind of scale will you construct to rate the overall portfolio? Number seven, how will you combine all ratings into final grade? Number eight, who will be involved in the planning process? Number nine, what content categories are included in your portfolio? Number 10, will learners have a choice over content categories 
Number 11, who decides what samples to include in each content area? Number 12, how many samples will be included in each area? 13, have you specified deadlines of the entries? 14, have you developed forms to rate and summarize ratings for all drafts and final products? 15, what are your instructions on how to work gets turned in and returned? Number 16, where will the portfolio be kept and who has access to them? 17. Who will plan, conduct, and attend the final conference? And that is all for our group presentation. Thank you for watching and God bless everyone.